an interesting case of this 31 year old gentleman who presented with a metallic wire in his interior chamber following accidental injury to the right eye while opening a party popper. 2.8 mm clear corneal incision was made, oculan 1% injected following which pupillary dilatation was observed. We filled the AC with viscoat in order to protect the endothelium. We can clearly see the classical traumatic rosette shaped cataract at this stage. Here we also observe that one end of the foreign body, the metallic wire is visible while the other end is tucked away in the angle. We gently maneuver the foreign body entirely into the AC using a Sinsky hook and try orienting it in the direction of the main port. It is of utmost importance to follow the track of the wire in order to avoid creation of false passages or injuring the iris. Again, using the Sinsky hook from the other side, we dislodge the foreign body out. Macpherson's forcep was used to remove the wire, carefully guided by the dialer from the other end. With the foreign body now out, we decided to go ahead with phaco emulsification, keeping in mind the sealed corneal wound. A radial tear was created with the micro scissors at the point of the pre-existing breach by the wire. Micro rexus forcep was used to complete the rexus as it provides enhanced stability. The forceps should be repeatedly released and then regrasped in order to have a precise control of the tear direction. Hydrodissection completed thoroughly. Fico emulsification is now performed at lower parameters and the soft cataract is completely aspirated. Bimanual irrigation and aspiration is done to remove the cortical matter. An all-out effort should be made to minimize interior chamber fluctuations at this point. While switching hands, the knee-jerk reflex to withdraw the eye tip from the eye should be avoided. Rather, the surgeon should stay put in irrigation and AC should be filled with an ocular viscoelastic device from the side port. At this point, we can also appreciate the extension of the anterior lens capsule at 10 o'clock and 7 o'clock. Hence, we decided to go ahead with the three-piece intraocular lens implantation in the bag and try orienting it perpendicular to the existing anterior capsular tear. Visco removal was done and the wounds were sealed with hydration. We had a very happy patient improving to 6x6 with pinhole on post-operative day 1, a well-centered intraocular lens and a minimal ACD action.